The book is about what roles youth play in post-conflict reconstruction. I became really interested in this issue when I was an undergraduate student taking a Civil Wars 101 class, and we were studying this theory that says that countries with a really large population of young men are more likely to fall into conflict, more likely to be unstable. And I thought, well, this is making a lot of assumptions. And what role do young people actually play in conflict? Can they contribute to peace and not just violence? Uh, so I began doing a bit more research into, let, let's look at it in a post-conflict context where we're trying to build up to peace from instability. And what role do youth play? Are they a stabilizing factor or are they a destabilizing factor? And that's what the book examines. Defining youth is really tricky, especially in conflict situations. Uh, there are legal definitions of children which say anyone who is under the age of 18 or under the age of majority in their country, if it's different, is a child. And there are legal structures built in to protect children. But youth are different. They are between child and adult. Children who have lived through conflict may have experienced things that are more maturing, that are forced them to be adults. They've led soldiers in battle. They've uh, been young women who are bushwives, and maybe in the, after the conflict they've lost their parents and they are now uh, the leaders of their family, and they are de facto adults. They're serving the roles of as adults, but in a post-conflict society they're still considered under the age of majority. They're not an adult, they're not a child. What are they? They're youth. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, where most of the young people participating in conflict are doing so as soldiers, there are also young people participating in programs uh, that were journalists, that had their own radio program and told other young people where they could find demobilization programs, get rid of their gun, and find jobs. I focused on three different countries. Uh, the first was Kosovo in its war for independence from the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. The second is Mozambique. And the third is the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The cases were selected for a variety of different reasons to present the best diversity of, of youth roles in conflict. Mozambique represents sort of the poster child of post-conflict stabilization. It's a country with a very high youth population and a very high percentage of child soldiers in the conflict. And yet somehow, at the end of it all, they managed to have one of the most successful post-conflict operations in Africa to date. Um, Kosovo was selected sort of as a middle case. It's emerged piecemeal, piece by piece, through its post-conflict arena and has achieved statehood, and yet its stability is still somewhat unclear. And youth had a major role in that. Kosovo has the highest pop proportion of youth in the population in all of Europe. And uh, finally, the DRC was sort of our case with the least amount of stability. It has descended back into civil war, and youth have been a major part of that. Uh, youth continue to be recruited as child soldiers. Um, they're forced laborers in mines that are funding rebel groups, and uh, they're also some of the greatest victims of the conflict through gender-based violence, uh, rape, and obviously um, death uh, due, to, due to both being part of the conflict as a soldier or to hunger, malnutrition, etc. Young people in America can take away some inspiration from this book. There are young people who have lived through horrible, tra tragic circumstances who have been able to rise above and are making a huge difference in the future of their entire country, along with a huge difference in the lives of their peers. And they've overcome the fact that they aren't adults. They aren't recognized to vote in their country, and they don't have the respect to you know, run a campaign or, or really be a driving political force. But at the same time, through music, through the arts, through creative means, or just through good old community service, they are changing the way their country is going to be in the future. And young people in America can do the same thing.